Hi, welcome to State Space Modeling with Tim. I'm Tim. In the previous video, I did an example using a mechanical system on how to develop a state space model given a diagram of a mechanical system. In this video, we're going to be looking at an example, but before we look at that example, as you can see on the screen, it will be an electrical RLC circuit system example. But before we can even look at that example, I just want to go over the steps. I feel like I poorly explained the steps in the previous example, and I want to spend a bit of time re-explaining those steps. And I've actually added a bit more notation so that it can be a bit more obvious. So in the previous example, I said that the first step is to develop relevant differential equations. This is because our, our um, state space model requires that we have differential equations with respect to time. And the second step um, is to identify or select state-based models. And I did give a hint in the previous example, but here I've actually written it out. The hint is variables are the ones with the deriv derivatives. That means the differentiated variable is going to make up your set of state variables. So please check the highest and to find out how many Differential, uh, how many state variables you're going to need, check the highest order of your differential equations. So you must have n state variables where n is the highest order. For example, and I've taken this one from the previous example, u plus m second derivative of y is equal to c first derivative of y plus ky. It has, a first, it has the highest order of 2 because of this second derivative which is acceleration. So you're going to have two state variables. So that's something to check out for. If you sometimes, and I must emphasize this, sometimes you're going to have more than one variable that is being differentiated. So that will, that will tell you how many state variables you're going to have, or you're going to have the option to select which ones you want to be your state variables and what should be constant. But usually remember, we are dealing in the time domain. So if something is not a function of time and it's not being der derivated with respect to time, then it might not be the right choice to make it a state variable. So just keep that in mind. So for this particular example here, you would, your, your system would have two state variables, just as you saw in the previous example. I hope this clears it up. And then the third step is you must organize your differential equations so that they are in the canonical forms, which is x dot is equal to ax plus bu and y is equal to cx plus du. So here's another hint. Each differential of your state variables must be strictly in terms of your state variables and input. It is illegal to have x dot 2 is equal to 3x dot 1 and 4x dot 1. These two here, they are derivatives of your state variables, they cannot be on the right hand side. They must all be dependent on your on your state variables independently. So you're gonna have to you're gonna need something that says that um, x dot one is a function of say x one, x two, and so on up until x n. And so will x two x dot two it must follow this rule. X dot three must also follow this rule. So if you are having, if you are still having derivatives of your um, of your state variables on the right hand side as your final equations, it doesn't match with the canonical form, and that is completely incorrect. So I hope this has clarified, and I don't think I'm going to be doing this example in this video. I'm going to do it in the next video because this is already taken over four minutes. And until then, take care.